Good morning students, myself Dr. Raghusudha, Head Assistant Professor, Department of Microbiology, Government City College, Hyderabad is here to talk on sterilization. Control of microorganisms is one of the most important aspect of microbiology. Persons directly or indirectly concerned with microbes should have a knowledge of controlling them. The main reasons for controlling microorganisms are to prevent infection of man, his animals and plants, to prevent spoilage of food and other commodities, to prevent interference by contaminating microorganisms in various industrial processes that depend on pure cultures, to prevent contamination of materials used in pure culture, work in laboratories, diagnosis, research and industry, to prevent epidemics that kill off vast number of people, to prevent high death rate due to post-operative infections in hospitals, etc. The control of microorganisms involves stopping or inhibiting the growth of microorganisms, reducing their number to that level which poses no danger, completely eliminating them from environment or from infected person by killing or destroying them by either physically or, or chemically. The species of microorganisms vary in the case with which they may be destroyed, removed or inhibited. The situation in which they occur also differ greatly. For example, they occur in air, blood, water, soil, food, sewage and what not. Therefore, no one or two methods are applicable. Each situation is a problem in itself. The methods employed must depend on the knowledge and purpose of the operation. However, there are basic facts which could be used as guide in any situation. Definitions. Sterilization is a process by which an article, surface or medium is made free of all microorganisms either in vegetative or spore form. Disinfection. Destruction of all pathogens or organisms capable of producing infections but not necessarily spores. All organisms may not be killed but the number is reduced to a level that is no longer harmful to health. Antiseptics. Chemical disinfectants which can safely apply to living tissues and are used to prevent infection by inhibiting the growth of microorganisms. Asepsis. Technique by which the occurrence of infection into an uninfected tissue is prevented. What is sterilizing? What to sterilize? It is mandatory to sterilize all instruments that penetrate soft tissues and bone. Instruments that are not intended to penetrate the tissue but that may come in contact with oral tissues. If the sterilization process may damage the instruments, then sterilization can be replaced by disinfection process. Why we need sterilization? Microorganisms capable of causing infection are constantly present in the external environment and on the human body. Microorganisms are responsible for contamination and infection. The aim of sterilization is to remove or destroy them from materials or from surfaces. Uses of sterilization. Sterilization of materials, instruments used in surgical and diagnostic procedures. Sterilization of media and reagents used in the microbiology laboratory. Food and drug manufacturing to ensure safety from contaminating organisms. How to sterilize materials? Inoculating wires and loops are to be sterilized by red heat method. Glasswares, syringes, petri dishes, test tubes, flasks, etc. are to be sterilized by hot air oven. Disposable syringes and other disposable items can be sterilized by gamma radiation. Culture media by autoclaving. Culture media containing serum and egg by tendalization. Toxin, serum, sugar and antibiotic solutions by filtration. Cystoscope and endoscopes by glutaraldehyde. Infected soil dress dressings are to be incinerated. Skin by iodine or alcohol. Milk by pasteurization. Methods of sterilization. There are three major methods of sterilization. Namely, physical method, chemical method and mechanical method. Physical method is in turn of three types, 
dry heat sterilization, moist heat sterilization, and sterilization by radiation. Chemical methods is with two headings, gaseous sterilization and sterilization by disinfectants. Mechanical method is by filtration. The first type is physical method. Physical method of sterilization can be in turn obtained by four subheadings or four mechanisms. One is using sunlight, drying, third one is heat, fourth one is radiation. Heat can be applied in two forms, moist heat or dry heat. Sunlight, it is responsible for spontaneous sterilization in natural conditions. In tropical countries, uh, the sunlight is more effective in killing germs due to combination of UV rays and heat. By killing bacteria suspended in water, sunlight provides natural method of disinfection of tanks and lakes. The second method is drying. Moisture is essential for growth of bacteria. Drying in air has dangerous effect on many bacteria. However, spores are unaffected by this method. Therefore, it is not a satisfactory method for sterilization. Heat effectively kills majority of microorganisms and the principle behind this is dry heat denatures the bacterial proteins and uh, oxidation damages most of the proteins. Toxic effect of elevated levels of electrolytes destroy the microorganisms. Heat sterilization, it has two types, dry heat sterilization. In dry heat sterilization, dry heat is used for sterilizing different materials. Heated air or fire is used in this process. As compared to moist heat sterilization, the temperature is high. The temperature is maintained for almost an hour to kill the most difficult of the resistant spores. Dry heat sterilization also has four types. Dry heat can be applied in four mechanisms using hot air oven, red hot sterilization, direct flame and incineration. Dry heat sterilization involves heating at atmospheric pressure and often uses a fan to obtain uniform temperature by circulation. Heating at 180 degrees centigrade for half an hour, 170 degrees for one hour, 160 degrees centigrade for two hours. Times are the periods during which the object is maintained at the respective temperature. Hot air oven. It is the most widely used method. Electrically heated and fitted with a fan to even distribution of air in the chamber. Fitted with a thermostat that maintains the chamber's air at a chosen temperature. Hot air oven can be used with uh, three different temperatures. When it is 160 degree centigrade, it is to be maintained for 2 hours. At 170 degree centigrade, it is to be maintained for 1 hour. 180 degree centigrade for 30 minutes to get sterilization of the selected or inserted glassware. Uses of hot air oven. It is used for sterilization of glasswares like glass syringes, petri dishes, pipettes and test tubes. Surgical instruments like scapels, scissors, forceps also are being sterilized in the hot air oven. Chemicals like liquid para paraffin and fats are also sterilized in this hot air oven. Dry heat. Dry heat can be applied. The second method is red heat. Here the materials are held in the flame for of a Bunsen burner till it becomes red hot. Inoculation loops and wires are sterilized by red heat. Similarly, forceps and needles are also sterilized using this red heat. The third mechanism is flaming. Here the materials are passed through a flame of a Bunsen burner without allowing them to become red hot like glass slides, then uh, scapels, then mouth of the culture tubes or test tubes are uh, flamed before transferring the culture from one test tube to the another test tube. Incineration is another method. Here materials are reduced to ashes by burning. The instrument uh, used to, is known as incinerator. 
soiled dressings or animal carcasses bedding pathological materials are incinerated to ashes disadvantages of dry heat sterilization it is less reliable than autoclaving large temperature difference may arise within devices the sharp instruments get dulled many materials do not tolerate the dry heat moving on to the second mechanism moist heat Moist heat method is used for heat sensitive materials and materials through which steam is permeable like culture media culture media is sterilized through moist heat sterilization it has three types below 100 degree centigrade above 100 degree centigrade and at 100 degree centigrade below 100 degree centigrade it has two types one is pasteurization in this the bacterial population of the liquid like milk and other organisms which cause spoilage are been reduced by applying less heat uh, temperature of 72 degree centigrade is been used in this pasteurization method in this method only vegetative cells will be destroyed spores are not affected the second method is inspissation here the temperature is 80 to 85 degrees centigrade and it is applied for half an hour daily on three consecutive days medias containing serum or egg media are sterilized by this method next 800 degrees centigrade 800 degrees centigrade again we have two types boiling boiling is very simple method of water disinfection heating water at a high temperature 100 degree centigrade kills most of the pathogenic organisms particularly viruses and bacteria causing water borne diseases in order for boiling to be more effective the water must boil for at least 20 minutes the second mechanism at 100 degree centigrade is tindalization here it is exposed to 100 degree centigrade for 20 to 45 minutes for three successive days it is used for sterilizing sugars gelatins and serum containing media moving on to the third type above 100 degree centigrade above 100 degree centigrade is obtained by an instrument known as autoclave it is most reliable method of sterilization now autoclave use uh, pressurized steam to destroy microorganisms and are the most dependable systems available for the decontamination of laboratory waste and the sterilization of glassware media and reagents for effective heat transfer steam must flush the air out of the autoclave chamber generally the conditions employed are temperature up to 121 to 134 degree centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes under 15 lbs pressure the condition based on the type of the material used for sterilization components of the autoclave it consists of vertical or horizontal cylinder of gun metal or stainless steel the lid is fastened by screw clamps and rendering air tight by an asbestos washer the lid bears a discharge tap for air and steam a pressure gauze and a safety valve here in the picture you can see the lid at one end then uh, this is the stainless steel chamber in which we keep all our medias for sterilization and the other side you can see the pressure regulator for steam supply and a thermometer for checking the temperature and uh, you can also see a pressure gauze safety valve then uh, exhaust uh, valve to remove uh, the steam after sterilization sterilization conditions of an autoclave is the temperature is above 100 degree centigrade that is 121 degree centigrade which can be obtained when a pressure is applied that is 15 lbs pressure per square inch is applied in order to obtain a temperature of 121 degree centigrade and which is to be hold for 15 minutes to destroy all the vegetative cells and spores of bacteria and viruses
the temp uh, the timings can be reduced to 10 minutes where the temperature is to be maintained for 126 degree centigrade and at 133 degree centigrade that uh, the holding time is for 3 minutes moving on to the next physical method third physical method of sterilization is by radiation many types of radiation are used for sterilization like electromagnetic radiation example gamma rays and uv light particulate radiation like accelerated electrons the major target for these radiation is microbial dna radiation sterilization with high energy gamma rays or accelerated electrons have proven to be a useful method for the industrial sterilization of heat sensitive products Radiation sterilization is generally applied to articles in the dry state including surgical uh, instruments, sutures, processes, unit dose, ointments, plastic syringes and dry pharmaceutical products. UV light with its much low energy and poor penetrability finds uses in the sterilization of air for surface sterilization of aseptic work areas for treatment of manufacturing grade water but is not suitable for sterilization of pharmaceutical dosage forms radiation sterilization is of two types here we use non ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation non ionizing radiation is also known as hot sterilization and here we use two types of rays infrared rays and uv rays infrared rays are used for rapid mass sterilization of pre-packed items such as syringe catheters a thin tube that is put into the body in order to remove liquids uv rays are used for disinfecting enclosed areas such as entryways operation theaters and laboratory uv rays is used in laminar airflow chambers for sterilization of the work area the second type of radiation sterilization is by using ionizing rays and this method is also known as cold sterilization here we use gamma rays and x-rays for obtaining cold sterilization used for sterilizing plastics syringes swabs animal feeds oils greases fabric and metal foils advantages of radiation sterilization is clean and dry process ensures full exposure of the object from all directions disadvantages is poses threat to human it is a lengthy process and requires very qualified persons next mechanism of sterilization after finishing physical methods of sterilization we are moving to the second type of sterilization known as chemical methods here we use two types of chemicals gaseous uh, chemicals and uh, liquid chemicals gaseous chemicals it is known as gaseous sterilization wherein we use two types of gases ethylene oxide and formaldehyde gas in liquid sterilization we use alcohol and phenol gaseous sterilization ethylene oxide sterilization is mainly used to sterilize medical and pharmaceutical products that cannot support conventional high temperature steam sterilization such as devices that incorporate electronic components plastic packaging or plastic containers this method uses automatic device filled with ethylene oxide gas at temperature below 100 degrees centigrade to sterilize complex and delicate materials ethylene oxide destroys microorganisms by chemical reacting with nucleic acids advantages of ethylene oxide is it is fully automated high efficient 100 percent result has been obtained disadvantages is complex and time consuming process and carcinogenic also formaldehyde gas another low temperature method for sterilizing heat sensitive items is formaldehyde sterilization formaldehyde sterilization is an organic chemical compound which is byproduct of the metabolism of many organisms and it is commonly found in fresh air rain water foods industrial products and fabrics it is considered even more dangerous than ethylene oxide and is therefore less commonly used for sterilization 
formaldehyde sterilization is used where sterilization by steam or high temperature is not possible formaldehyde is soluble in water and its inactivation power is greatly improved by the presence of humidity it is most commonly used as a disinfectant but sometimes formaldehyde is used as a sterilizing agent the process is known as low temperature steam and formaldehyde ltsf in countries such as united kingdom germany sweden denmark and norway sterilization by low temperature steam and formaldehyde is accepted but not common on the other hand in several countries formaldehyde as a sterilizing agent is discouraged ldsf has not been fda cleared for use in healthcare facilities in usa advantages of formaldehyde is very reactive molecule faster cycle time compared to ethylene oxide cost per cycle is low than eto after sterilization most uh, loads are available for immediate use disadvantage of formaldehyde is the vapor is extremely irritating to eyes weak penetrating power compared to eto operates on a high temperature than eto formaldehyde reduce residue can remain on the sterilized goods if the rising rinsing phase is not 100% efficient this can be harmful for the patients next mechanism is liquid sterilization under chemical methods alcohols are effective disinfectants for many reasons they evaporate quickly without leaving a residue they are capable of dissolving lipids which makes them effective against lipid wrapped viral cells such as hiv and hepatitis a they are inexpensive and relatively easy to handle although their vapors are flammable ethanol and isopropyl alcohols are both members of alcohol family and have similar disinfectant properties ethanol is a type of alcohol present in alcoholic beverages isopropyl alcohol is also known as isopropanol or 2 propanol or rubbing alcohol when used as disinfectant both are typically at a concentration of 70% in water phenol is one of the oldest antiseptic agent phenols act by damaging cell membranes thus releasing cell contents and causing lysis of the microorganisms phenol is commonly found in mouth washes scrubs soaps and surface disinfectants phenols are used for decontamination of hospital environment including laboratory surfaces and non critical medical items examples are detol and lysol the third mechanism of sterilization is filtration or mechanical method of sterilization filtration sterilization is used for heat sensitive materials to sterilize filtration process does not destroy but remove the microorganisms filtration allows for exclusion of organisms based upon size procedure the solution to be sterilized is passed through the filter and collected on the sterile receiver by application of a positive pressure to the non sterile compartment or negative pressure to the sterile side mode of action the filters are thought to function by one or usually a combination of the following sieving or screening entrapment method electrostatic attraction when a particle is larger than the pore size of the filter the particle is retained on the filter and this is known as sieving or screening entrapment occurs when a particle size is smaller than the size of the pore enters into the pore channel and lodges onto the curve of the channel while passing through it in electrostatic attraction particles are attracted or absorbed at the surface of the filter bed which is oppositely charged there are four types of filters membrane filters sintered or fritted glass filters sids filters and ceramic filters membrane filters they are made of cellulose derivative uh, acetate or nitrate membranes they are very fine they are fixed in some suitable holders nominal pore size is 0.22 plus or minus 0.02 mm or less is required the membranes are brittle when dry in this condition they can be stored for years together they become very tough when dipped in water 
they are suitable for sterilizing aqueous and oil solutions but not for organic solvents such as alcohols or chloroforms they are sterilized by autoclaving or by ethylene oxide gas they cannot be sterilized by dry heat as they decompose above 130 degrees centigrade membrane filters are generally blocked by dry particles and organisms Pre-filtration through glass fiber paper uh, pre-filter reduces the risk of membrane filters. Examples for membrane filters are MF millipore. It is a mixture of cellulose esters made up of uh, mixture of cellulose esters. Sartus regular. It is made up of cellulose nitrate. Picture of membrane filtration unit wherein we can see uh, the membrane filtration unit which consists of uh, a vacuum pump. A filter uh, flask, rubber stopper, stainless steel base above which the membrane filter is placed with the help of a uh, forceps and uh, you can see a locking ring, a funnel through which uh, the sample, water sample can be added. Sintered or fritted glass filters. Borosilicate glass is finely powdered in a ball mill and the particles of required size are separated. This is packed into disc mounted and heated till the particles get fused. The disc thus may have a pore size of 2 mm and are used for filtration. They are cleaned with the help of sulfuric acid. SIDS filter, it consists of two parts. The lower part filled with a perforated plate over which the compressed asbestos pad is placed. Upper part has a valve through which pressure can be applied. Both parts joined together by winged nuts. The main advantage of this filter is that no risk of contamination or and it is easy to use. For viscous solutions, they are more suitable. Ceramic filters. Ceramic water filters are an inexpensive and effective type of water filters that rely on small pore size of ceramic material to filter dirt, debris and bacteria out. However, filters are typically not effective against viruses since they are small enough to pass through the clean side of the filter. Ceramic filtration does not remove chemical contaminants. However, some manufacturers especially of ceramic candle filters incorporate a high performance activated carbon core inside the ceramic filter that reduces organic and metallic contaminants. The two most common type of ceramic water filters are pot type and candle type filters. So one more important aspect under filtration is filtration of air done by laminar airflow system. What is a laminar airflow? It is used for reducing the danger of infection while working with pathogenic microbes. Working on the principle of application of fibrous filters in air filter. Here the air of a closed cabinet is made to pass through high efficiency particulate air filters known as HEPA filters. These HEPA filters does not allow any suspended particles above the size of 0.3 mm diameter to go out. The laminar airflow system is used for reducing the danger of infection while working with pathogenic microorganisms and these laminar airflows may are available in two forms horizontal and vertical both are same in principle and construction except for their orientation laminar airflow systems are an integral part of microbiology laboratory hospital rooms pharmaceutical laboratories electronic industries etc in microbiological laboratories all operations involving inoculation and transfer of culture opening of lyophilized cultures etc are performed in open without necessitating a closed chamber the working platform of a laminar airflow always have a partic uh, particle free air providing a microbe free environment thank you